So in this question, we're dealing again with um, AC circuits. So we have resistors, capacitors, and inductors in our circuit. But this one is dealing with a parallel branch of two series branches. So the approach is the same as when we're dealing with a question that only has a series part, except we're just doing the same question twice. So this question is asking us, calculate the magnitude and phase of the current in each branch. So let's just mark what the currents are in the branch first. We've got I1 flowing through this branch, which is a resistor OR1 of four ohms, and a capacitor with a capacitive reactance of nine ohms. And we have I2 flowing here, and this is a resistor, I'm going to call this R2, because it's in the second branch, of 5 ohms. And an inductor with an inductive reactance XL of 7 ohms. And the total current coming from our supply, I'm going to label IT. So when the question asks you to calculate the magnitude and phase of the current in each branch, these are the three currents it's referring to. So I1, I2, and then the total current here. So let's work with I1 first. Now just as if you were dealing with a series branch on its own, which is this resistor and capacitor, we see that the supply voltage of 230 volts is actually connected directly across this series branch. So the idea here is to calculate the impedance of this branch first, we'll call it Z1. And then using that, we can work out the current using Ohm's law. So let's get Z1 first. So the impedance of that branch is going to be R1 squared plus XC squared, and we get the square root of all of that. So that will be 4 squared plus 9 squared, and that works out at 9.85 ohms for that branch Z1. Now, Using Ohm's law, let's just remind ourselves. Ohm's law relates the impedance, current, and voltage in a circuit. So if we were dealing with DC, we'd have OR here for resistance, but because we're dealing with AC, we have Z for impedance. So if we want to get the current in this branch, I1, this one here, it's going to be the voltage across that, which is supply voltage V divided by the impedance Z1. So that will be 230 over 9.85. And if you put this into your calculator, you should get out that this the magnitude of I1 is 23.53 amps. So don't forget your units there as well. So we have the magnitude, let's be, be clear about that, magnitude. So the next thing we have to get is the phase of the current in that branch. So the phase relates, to, the phase tells us the angle between this voltage and the current. So you'll know from your formula book, there's a section in your AC relating power factor, which is the cos of the angle, theta, and it's equal to R over Z, so the resistance of a branch divided by the impedance of the branch. So we can say, right, theta 1, so the phase of the first branch, is going to be equal to cos inverse of R1 over Z1. So if we fill those in, because inverse of R1 is 4 ohms, 
and Z1 we calculated as 9.85 ohms we get out an angle of 66.04 degrees and this would be important but because this is a capacitor this is going to be leading as in it's a positive value for that angle so that's the phase and this is the magnitude of our first branch so we just repeat that process now to get the values for i2 so i'll move this up top here so we want to get i2 again just calculate the impedance of that branch so the impedance for this branch here will be or 2 squared plus XL squared pass those values in 5 squared plus 7 squared and we get out 8.06 ohms for branch 2 still using ohms law we can work out the current I2 it's the same voltage is applied across this branch of the circuit so we see here so I2 is just going to be 230 over 8.06 which works out at 28.52 amps. So remember now this is the magnitude of the current in that branch. So now we need to get the phase just like we did here with the first one. So using the same formula from our power factor, which tells us that the cause of the phase is equal to the ratio of the resistance in that branch to the impedance of that branch we can then say right theta 2 is cos inverse of R2 over Z2 that'll be 5 over 8.06 and the angle comes out at 51.65 degrees and because this is an inductive branch, the current in that will be lagging. So that angle will actually be a minus value. Now the reason we need to know whether they're leading or lagging comes into play when we want to work out the total current in this branch. So I'll just divide up this page so we're clear what's happening on each side. To work out the total current, we're going to work out the horizontal and vertical components of each of these currents here. So I'll do a quick sketch to kind of explain what that means. So we see here that voltage is common across this entire circuit. So we can use our voltage as a reference here. So my voltage is my reference and we can see that I1 is going to have a magnitude of 23.53 at an angle of plus 66.04 degrees. So I1 is going to be somewhere in this region here. And that I2 has a magnitude of 28.52 but an angle of minus 51.6. So somewhere in the region of this. So this isn't a scale, it's just for illustrative purposes. Now, if we want to work out the total current for this, as in IT, we need to work out the horizontal and vertical parts for each of these currents individually and add them together. 
So in your form of the book, in AC formula for parallel circuits, you'll see there's an equation for horizontal components of a current, IH, and the vertical components, IV. I think it's helpful to use a table here if you're calculating this to keep track of what's happening. So we have I1, I2, and I total. And we have the horizontal component and the vertical component. Now, if we want to work out the horizontal component, it's going to be whatever the current's magnitude is times the cosine of the phase. And if we want to work out the vertical component, it's the magnitude of the current times the sine of the phase. So if we do this for each individual current and then add the horizontal components together, we'll get the horizontal component of our total current and the same for the vertical part. So let's try that. So I1 had a magnitude of 23.53. That's here. Times the cos of 66.04 degrees. And that equals 9.57 amps. We can stick the same formula here, 23.53 times the sine of 66.04 degrees. And that comes out at 21.49 amps. So what these two values are here is actually the horizontal part of I1 and the vertical part of I1. So they're the first components we've worked out. So let's do the same for I2. It has a magnitude of 28.52 times the cosine of minus, because it's lagging, 51.65 degrees. And that comes out at 17 Point six nine degrees. So that's the horizontal component of I2 here. And this one will be the same magnitude times the sine of minus 51.65 degrees. And this one works out at minus 22.36. Which makes sense because look, for I2, horizontal part is positive and our vertical part is downwards, it's negative. This direction. So if we get the sum of these, so 9.57 plus 17.69, we get 27.26 amps for our total horizontal part. And for the, for the vertical part, we get minus 0 0.87 amps. So now if we go back to our formula in our book, if we want to get the magnitude of the total current, it's going to be IH squared plus IV squared this being IV and this being IH. So pass these into your calculator. 27.26 squared plus minus 0 0.87 to be squared. Calculate this here now. 27.26 squared plus minus 0 
eight, seven squared, we get 27 point two seven amps as the magnitude of our total current IT.